Okay. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I'm Virginia Gallianone with La Opinion newspaper, and I'm here to talk about Proposition 55, the California Children Education and Healthcare Pro Protection. To my right is Alma Hernandez from SEIU, and to my left is David Wall, le the Legislative Director for Howard Harvest Taxpayer Association. Uh, first, we are going to let uh, each each of you uh, do an introductory and uh, start with a question. Great. Hi, my name is Alma Hernandez. I'm with um, SEIU. We represent over 700,000 healthcare workers, city, state, and county employees, as well as janitors and classified staff, to name a few. I'm here to give you the yes on 55 si uh, side, and 55 is the income tax extension on California's uh, wealthy. And it, it has strict accountability requirements, and it is a, a decision for the voters uh, that they get to voice their values. And Proposition 55 um, allows us to continue to invest in people and our kids and our healthcare system, or does Californians want to give uh, the wealthiest of our, of our residents a $4 billion tax cut? For me and my family, the California that I want to see is one that invests in people and my kids and our kids in general. So that is why we are supporting Proposition 55. Thank you. Hi, my name is David Wolf. I'm the legislative director at the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, representing 200,000 average California taxpayers all across the state of California. And we are opposed to Proposition 55 today. First of all, I do just want to thank C Political for uh, putting on this event today. This is my third ballot presentation. It's been a great day um, articulating these propositions and getting to know so many people with C Political as well as those individuals out in the audience. So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to come down today. Uh, there's just three points in opposition to Prop 55, and I'm sure Virginia is going to be touching on all of these over the next 20 minutes. Um, just number one, the question of promises. You know, Governor Brown was a big proponent of Proposition 30, which was a measure in Prop tw or a measure in uh, 2012 that preceded Proposition 55. Prop 55 would extend the income taxes by another 12 years of Prop 30. And Governor Brown said, "Hey, these taxes are going to disappear in 2018." Um, you know, when the you know when, when Prop 30 sunsets as it's supposed to. And that's just not the case, obviously, if you're extending them another 12 years. Um, also, too, the measure just delays reforms. There's plenty of education reforms that need to be out there and done and conducted, um, you know, in order to ensure that our education dollars have more value. And number three, uh, everyone's running around saying, um, you know, education funding is going to be cut if Prop 55 doesn't pass, and that's just not the case. So I'm looking forward to diving into these issues. All right, thank you. So uh, let's start with Alma. Uh, why this is so important, this funding? I mean, uh, David is saying the schools are already funded and we already have you know, the money necessary. Why is this so important? You know, everyone, including the governor, the LAO, the Department of Finance, is uh, uh, talking about a, a recession currently in our future. All economists um, are talking about it. And so what Proposition 55 will do is ensure that we prevent any more cuts um, to education, to our health care system, to the California that we all deserve. Um, it is not an ex it is a, still an extension, um, and it taxes the wealthiest uh, Californians. And we believe that uh, that is needed to continue to have the California that we all envision. All right, thank you. Do you want to respond to this? Yeah, no, I'll respond to this. When Prop 30 was passed in 2012, and again, that was the proposition that set up three new income tax brackets um, on top of the seven that California already has, you know, most bracketed highest income tax system in California by a long shot. Um, when that passed in 2012, we were kind of in the middle of a recession, and the argument was that those taxes were necessary. But that's simply not the case. I mean, the Legislative Analyst Office, which is the nonpartisan group that advises the legislature, uh, they've come out and said that revenues would continue to increase in the state. You know, our record $122 billion budget, revenues would continue to increase even if Proposition 55 was not passed. So it's hard to justify with that record general fund, with $10 billion in a rainy day reserve, and with billions of dollars worth of surpluses, why Prop 55 is needed. 
Um, you want to say something about you know, with their argument that they're so ready funding for the schools? Yeah, absolutely. I think what they, we, we live in a reality. I think that um, op opponents of it have a very strict uh, no tax philosophy. And um, SCIU and our members and my children all live in the reality of we saw the massive, ta the massive cuts to schools that we had to see during the recession. There is no question about a recession coming at some point in our future. And all Proposition 55 does is maintain what we currently have. It is not a new tax. It, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't, all it does is can maintain what we currently have so that we prevent what the reality of massive uh, cuts during uh, during the recession. All right, thank you. Um, you mentioned the you mentioned the fact of the temporary. Then it was originally uh, Proposition 30 and promises, and it wouldn't extend. You want to talk about that? Yeah. No. I mean, I think I, I you know I, I just think the whole argument is is disingenuous. That you know you've got all these politicians running around saying, hey, these taxes are going to expire as as scheduled in 2018 when we're out of the recession, and they just lied to us. Like they lie to us in a lot of different instances. Listen, since 2012, when Prop 30 was passed, um, education funding has increased 50% up to $72 billion. $72 billion. So is there really a shortfall in education? Um, again, with a record general fund budget, a $10 billion reserve fund, I would say no. And I would also question, and let's delve into this a little bit, what are we getting for the money? What reforms are we getting for a 50% increase in education funding over the last four years? Uh, let me tell you, 50% of all CSU students in the California State University system need to take at least one remedial math or English class at a cost of the state of $200 million a year. LAUSD has a 28% dropout rate right here in Los Angeles. And the only reason that's improved is because those students now need a D average, not a C average, to graduate. So, and again, that's just two examples. I could go on, but what are we really getting for the money? Okay, thank you. Do you want to answer to Absolutely. David? Absolutely. So what are we getting for the money? You're looking at her. That's is what we're getting for the money. I am a public schooled uh, graduate. I went to the finest of the, our, our public school system. I went to K through 12 to a public school system. My family um, was low income, so we received uh, food at, at schools because we couldn't afford otherwise. And I am just one of the millions of Californian students that cannot afford to provide a, a lunch or at, uh, for themselves. And so what do we get for the money? You're looking at her. You're looking at the opportunities that we're giving our Californians, our working, our working parents their, and their kids the ability to go to a well-funded school. I, you know, I actually disagree with David. I don't believe our schools are funded. Um, my, my kids are both in public school system. I have to donate to get a, an art school program there to save, to save teachers in that school. So th that is, that's just simply not, if we talk about disingenuous, it's not a reality. Our public school systems continue to suffer. And without Proposition 55, we're going to go back to those times of massive cuts, both to the curriculum and to teachers and to classified staff, that my, sec my, my second and uh, fourth grader cannot afford. Their futures are depending on uh, their schools being funded. All right, thank you. Um, I wanted to touch on a little bit on the part that the proposition proposed health care coverage for low income children and family. I don't know, do you want to start with this? Yeah, so Proposition 55 also provides um, a two, about approximately $2 billion to Medi-Cal, which, is is, which is the health care program for low-income Californians. And one in three Californians are now on this program. Um, and so this the Proposition 55 helps fund our schools, and there is also a portion that uh, funds the health care system. Again, if our Proposition 55 is a choice for Californians around their values. What kind of California do they want to see? Do they want a California that invests in uh, public schools and, and our health care systems? Or do they want to give a $4 billion tax cut to the wealthiest of Californians? All right, thank you, Alma. David, you want to talk about the health care? Yeah, no, with the health care, the Medi-Cal provision in Prop 55, I'm just going to say this. Um, there's no guarantee 
I mean, it's up to $2 billion in Prop 55 revenue that could go to Medi-Cal. That money's not guaranteed. It's based on the amount of capital gains revenue that flows into the state every year. In average or subpar economic years, it's highly likely little or no money could go to Medicare as a result of Prop 55 if it passes. So there is that number one. And I just want to pivot too to the point that it's easy to go after the wealthy 1% and those greedy corporations and all that. But it's worth noting this, this measure, because it sets at a threshold as low as $250,000 a year, it doesn't impact just you know that top 1% and those greedy corporations. This impacts, impacts successful small businesses as well. 80% um, of small businesses in this state are taxed under the personal income tax model. So no doubt, successful small businesses are going to get sucked up in this too. All right, thank you. Yeah, another thing I read about it, you just touched, it, it says then this conversation would kill jobs. How's, how's that going to be? Well, I think just for the point that I made, you know, if you're already getting taxed with extremely regressive sales taxes, the highest sales tax in the nation, um, you know, a workers' comp system that needs to be fixed again, um, all sorts of regulatory impacts, you know, this just adds another burden to that. Right, thank you. So I'm just going to go back to the reality. 1.4 million job, private sector jobs were created since the passage of uh, Proposition 30 in California. So although, again, the philosophy is that we're going to lose jobs, that, pe that people are going to move out of the state, the reality is that none of that is happening. Ever since the, pa the passage of Proposition 30, we have not seen data that suggests that Californians are leaving to other states. And in fact, we have seen 1.4 million private sector jobs being created in the state after the passage of Proposition 30. We, saw, we heard the same arguments being made back then. The reality is that they are false. All right, thank you. The other uh, point I want to touch is the, the point of accountability requirements, the accountability requirements in this proposition. Do you want to start talking about that? Yeah, no, I'll start, I'll start talking about account accountability. I would just say on this point, um, a good portion of the Proposition 55 revenue will go into education, but there's no guarantee necessarily that that money make it, makes it into the classroom, just that it gets placed within the general fund of school districts. I'm afraid, and I think all of you should be afraid as well, that a good portion of this money is going to go into unfunded pension liabilities, which total at least $500 billion across the state and well over $70 billion within the California teachers' retirement system. And so again, that's something to be mindful of. The money is not necessarily going to go into the classroom to help our kids. And so here's the beautiful part of Proposition 55, is that no, not only does it have strict accountability to make sure that the legislature can't touch the money that it raises, there's also absolute transparency with Proposition 55 so that voters can see down to the very last penny on where their money is going. So again, I think that there's the philosophy and the hypothetical situations that the, uh, our opponents are, are posing, and then there's just the reality that voters can see down to the last penny where their money is being spent under Proposition 55. All right, thank you. No, I was just going to make the point. They did the fir they did just really quickly. They did the first official Prop 30 audit less than a year ago after the tax has been in place for four years. So you can say there's accountability, but I would argue that that's basically a fig leaf. All right, um, thank you. Alma, uh, the Proposition 30 will expire on 2018, so why would we be voting right now for it? You know, our state budget needs um, to be stable, and this is the only way that we can know what revenue is coming in if, uh, but so that we can plan accordingly, so that we know where we need to invest and what is that the Californians care about. So, the so that is the reason why Proposition uh, 55 is on the uh, ballot this year. Is it, it, it helps not only by providing and prevent providing revenues for our schools and our healthcare system and preventing $4 billion in cuts in the first year alone, but also by allowing um, some stability and some planning uh, and thought ahead uh, as we move forward. All right, thank you. David, if Proposition 30, I mean, according to Alma, has been working, why would we let it expire? 
Well, first of all, and uh, Virginia, thank you for the question, there's not going to be $4 billion worth of cuts. As I said, the Legislative Analyst Office has come out and said education will be fully funded and there will be more revenue coming in to the state of California through their forecast period of 2020 if Proposition 55 doesn't pass, even if it doesn't pass, there's more personal income tax and more sales tax revenue coming into general fund coffers if Proposition 55 goes away. So far from there being a cut to education, education will be fully funded and more revenue will be coming into the state even without Prop 55. Don't you agree with that? Then we're gonna Absolutely. have no more. <laughs> no. <laughs> Department of Finance just okay. this last month alone projected we are below forecast. So as again, as much as the as the philosophical conversation that my opponent would like to have with Californians, budget projections, revenue projections last month are down. We can and may and likely will see a $4 billion cut if Proposition 55 is passed. So I don't know what forecast he's looking at, but I'm looking at October 2016, where we are uh, at about $400 million under projection. So that sounds to me like we're well on our way to not having uh, to, to a recession, which is what all economics and budget forecasters have been saying. No, not all budget forecasters. As I said, the Legislative Analyst Office, which is the nonpartisan group that advises the legislature on fiscal matters, and they're all over your ballot pamphlet too. They wrote the nonpartisan an analyses for all 18 ballot measures. They have come out and said, and they're trained economists with master's degrees just like Department of Finance, so you need to decide you know, which, which economists you're gonna listen to here. But they are saying fundamentally that education will be fully funded um, there will be no $4 billion shortfall, and general fund revenue will continue to increase through 2020 without Prop 55. Okay, we are looking at different forecasts. That's right. uh, would you like to just talk about a little bit about what uh, David mentioned, the 52% increase in, he said it has been more spending in, in education, 52% since Proposition 30? So I'll just take a step back and remind everyone where we were in Proposition 30. Um, we were in the deepest recession of our lifetime, and schools have seen, had seen at that point, continue to see massive cuts, massive teachers layoffs. Our system was failing us. So, you know, I'm not entirely sure where he's where he's getting his number from, but I will say that it, the Proposition 30 has then restored not even all of the cuts that we saw before the recession, just some of the cuts b before the recession. All right, thank you. Um, I wanted to leave like a little bit to each one to do a final statement. Uh, I wanna give you time, will I have like a minute and a half? Each one, if you would like to just close. Um, do you wanna start, Alba? Absolutely. So listen, 55 to me um, and our members is a vote on our values, on our belief system. Do we want to invest um, in our schools and our healthcare system, or do we want to go back to, do we want to risk going back to the days of teacher layoffs, of large classroom sizes? Do, um, you know, we may disagree on department, on uh, economic forecasts, but the one thing that I will say that I'm, that we're voting for is we're voting to fund people and children and making sure that they have um, what they need to be successful in their, in their lives. Um, Proposition 55 does not raise taxes on anybody. It continues, it is an extension on the, uh, on the uh, it's an extension on the taxes on the wealthiest of Californians. It has strict accountability and transparency measures so that voters can see down again to the last dollar where their money is being spent. So to me, this is Proposition 55 is a, a choice on values. I don't wanna give a wealthy, the wealthiest of Californians, a $4 billion tax cut. I want to make sure that our schools are properly funded so that my child can one day be sitting up here uh, being a, as a product of our wonderful public school system. All right, thank you very much, Alma. Virginia, mm -hmm. thank you. And I mean, let me just say, first of all, a tax extension is a tax increase. A 12-year tax extension is without question a tax increase. Um, Again, revenues continue to increase in the state without Proposition 55. Education revenues have increased 50% over the last four years to $72 billion, a record $122 billion budget, a $10 billion rainy day fund, billions of dollars worth of surplus, um, no reforms, 
LAUSD high dropout rate, um, you know, what are we getting for the money? I still think that's an extremely valid question. Um, and just the promise angle, again, um, Governor Brown said these taxes were gonna go away in 2018, and now they will be on the ballot and extended through 2030 if Prop 55 passes, impacting, again, not just wealthy income earners, but potentially small businesses, too. Vote no. Thank you very much. Um, I wanna thank La Opinion for letting me be here. I wanna thank C Politico for this great event, and I thank all of you for being here. Thank you, have a wonderful evening. <laughs>